Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Wookie, and I'm back with another fake Grand Order video. What are we talking about today? Well, they most recently announced that they're going to be doing a stream on the 10th, which they're going to talk about this upcoming event, so I figured it's as good a time as any to actually talk about the <laughs> first summon banner that's going to be in the event itself, and that's going to be today's video. Um, yeah, they'll probably go into more of the Halloween Rising. They don't have an exact date for it, it still just says mid-October. This is the same way they did it in Japan. Kind of weird that they did it this way over here too, but whatever. It's gonna be the same way, I guess. Uh, we can go over... This actually shows a little bit of the screen here, but you can see the event servants that are up, but we've already known this for a while. Mordred, uh, Deon, uh, every single Liz. Saito, Suna, Bedivir, Napoleon, Robin Hood, Toda, uh, Hector, Shirazade, Li Shu Wen, and the Mecha Ellies, of course. Let's move over here. <clears throat> In terms of the actual event, as I have to say every single time we talk about these, I don't know the actual event structure itself because I like to keep hidden what the events are like so I can play them myself, but just looking at this right here, I can see that this is points based. The best way to handle a points type event is to start immediately and start going for it. Um, and then, so yeah, that's that point right there. And then next, uh, let's go over the actual units that are going to be on it. So I'll go over this. The reason I'm not going over Dion, Napoleon, and Bedivere, they're. <laughs> The reason is is that I want to wait to see if the second banner changes or not. This has been something that's been going on in NA for a while. They keep making changes to banners, and sometimes it's for the first one. I'm pretty sure this banner is going to be staying the same because it all has new units, but this a banner like this could very easily be changed up. We could even see by our pre-release banner being a little bit different, you know, adding dudes that were previously not there. So I think it's for the best. I'll save talking about these three later. But for right now, we'll talk about summoning campaign one, and we can also talk about the free Liz that comes with the event, because she'll be right there from the start. So let me find her real quick. That's where the mech- Oh, that is something to kind of take note of this event. This is where you get the other NP copies for your Liz's. So you can actually, I said previously, you can only pick between one of the mecha Ellie's. That's a lie. You can actually get the other mecha Ellie right here, along with Right here, you can see Halloween and Brave right there for you. So, where are the Liz copies? The weird Liz at? There we go. So here's the Liz, the free Liz that will be joining us. Uh, Elizabeth Bathory Cinderella. She's going to be a writer, four star, obviously. She has one quick, two arts, two buster. Uh, her first skill is Snow White Princess B, grants self invincibility for 3 attacks 3 turns, increase on MP generation rate for 3 turns, 500% chance to grant self poison with 500 damage for 3 turns, it's a demerit. The MP rate is 30% up and it's a cooldown of 5. The second skill is Red Hood Slicer A, increase zone buster performance for 3 turns, increase on damage against wild beast enemies for 3 turns, and a 500% chance to reduce on defense for 10 by 10% for 3 turns, that's a demerit. The buster up is 30% and the wild beast damage is 50% and the cooldown is 5. Third skill, the glass cinderella EX. Cans critical stars, charges on NP, and then a 500% chance to seal your own seals for a single turn. So make sure to use all the other skills before you do this. Uh, it's a demerit, obviously. The stars are 30 and the MP is um, 30% and this is a cooldown of 4. The riding EX, increase on quick performance by 12%. The third append skill is an anti-foreigner attack damage aptitude. Noble Phantasm is a rank D++ fairy tale Erdazabot, the tale of the Briar Snow Demoness. It's anti-unit, it hits four times, the hit percentage is not important, I don't know why I'd never bring that up, why I brought it up now. <laughs> Removes own debuffs, activates first, deals damage to one enemy, MP level. Um, at level 1 is 600% and because she has a free unit you will get her to MP5. It is a 1000 uh, attack up at uh, MP level 5. It's 1000 damage at level 5. And then she also has an increase to the attack of Fairy Tale Servant Allies for 3 turns. This activates first, very important. At charge level 1 it's 20% and if you get it to all the way to charge level 5 it is 40%. Who are Fairy Tale units other than Nursery Rhyme? Okay. William Tell counts as a Nursery Rhyme? I thought that was an actual dude. No. William, okay. No, William Tell was a fairy tale. 
Robin, <laughs> I don't know why in my head I thought maybe it's because William the William Tell Overture is an actual song, and I was like, well, obviously they made it about <laughs> the real guy, but I don't think that's the case. I don't think that was a real man. Actually, I can just read his stuff right here and see. Uh, William Tell is a character from folklore. Okay, boom, all I needed to hear. Anyway, these are the characters on it. So there's more than a couple. A very silly bit, and that is uh, Liz Cinderella. She looks to me to be a very interesting unit. She is Buster Base, which would be good with um, Tomino, Tomomo and uh, Vich. The thing that I'm not sure of is that if you have a 500% chance to seal your own skills for a single turn, so does that mean that after you use this, if you then use Vich's skill to put the cooldown down by 2, will it not activate? I don't know, actually. If you know that, can you please tell me? Because that'd actually be good to know. I've never known of that interaction because I've never had it happen before, nor have I ever seen it. But if it actually does stop it, because otherwise this is a cooldown of 4 is pretty nice. If you actually take it away from the Vich, you have to look at her cooldowns like that. Because even if you use all of her skills, and then you use this, you still lose, like, so this is a cooldown of 5, it would technically be 6. This is a cooldown of 5, it's technically 6. This is a cooldown of 4, it's technically 5. And the reason is because the chancing to seal your own skills, I'm pretty sure, stops you from it to, from ticking up at least once. As far as I can tell. I assume that's the same way it works with NP. But maybe I'm getting confused on that. If you can actually tell me, <laughs> that'd be great to know. I actually don't know that much. I don't have that much experience with things with that seal your own skills, to be honest. I just always assume that... It works the same way it works for enemies, which is that it just doesn't tick up. But anyway, uh, 30 crit stars is pretty nice. 30% NP, not ideal, but for a free-to-play unit, that's pretty nice. You would want 50% for Buster, but you can definitely make do with 30%. Uh, this is all seems very nice. The only thing I just need to know about is how much does the steal the seal the own skills kind of hurt. Actually, if you actually just do it with her Noble Phantasm, it shouldn't be a bother at the end of the turn. It actually shouldn't be a bother at all. The thing I need to just know is that how does it actually interact with Vich's skills when you use it. Hmm. Well, either way, cool, free unit. This is like maybe one of my favorite Liz's for the Halloween one. Uh, which is funny because she's <laughs> not all that Halloween-like, but it is a very elegant dress. I think it looks extremely nice. Uh, I'm really digging the aesthetics that they got through. When they needed, when they decided to bring back Liz, I feel like I was the only person besides maybe my brother who was super hyped for it. And uh, they just knocked it straight out the park, I think. Bringing it back and giving it like a Cinderella type theme for Halloween. Because it's the perfect way of dressing up a character. She also does kind of look like someone who goes from the Lady Labyrinth archetype in, <laughs> in Yu-Gi-Oh! <laughs> maybe it's because of the horns. But anyway, that's Liz. She's free, can't wait to get her and mess around with her. Let's talk about the actual banner unit, which is a banner that I plan to summon on. So look forward to that later. We got Zenobia. Uh, Zenobia is an archer. Two quick, two arts, one buster. Uh, the active skills are the Cognomia Auguste B. Increase on arts performance for three turns, charges on MP gauge for every turn for three turns, gain crit stars every turn for three turns. The arts is 30%, the MP regen is 20%, and the star regen is 10, and the cooldown is 7. Yeah, that would that would figure. I was about to say, there has to be a huge drawback to this. There would be a long cooldown. The, Aur the Aurelian Siege Resist A grants self a gut status for one time three turns, increase critical star absorption for three turns, gain crit stars. 3,000 HP, 500% absorption, 20 stars on the cooldown of 6. That's not bad for her guts. Prospering Palmyra A increases party's attack for 3 turns, increases party your critical attack chance resistance for 3 turns. The attack up is 20% and the crit chance resistance is 30% and that's a cooldown of 5. Passive skills are Magic Resistance D, Independent Action B, Writing B, and the Append skill is an anti-berserker damage attack, attack aptitude. <laughs> In her uh, noble phantasm, uh, noble phantasm is a rank A plus. The authentic triumph, crumble, old golden shackles, old golden shame. Like I said, A plus self control. <laughs> noble phantasm type self control. Ever since I've started reading the type of noble phantasms there are, it really has shown me how many noble phantasm types they've created for Fago. I feel. Anyway, it hits four times. 
increases his own attack uh, by 10% for one turn, and then deals damage to all enemies, and then if they're a king, you deal an additional 150%. The damage is 450% at level 1, at level 5 is 750%, increase on crit uh, damage for 3 turns, <laughs> activates first. The crit damage up is 50% at, at overcharge level 1, and if you get it all the way to the final charge, it is 100%. There are plenty of kings in this game. Yeah, that, that, there be a lot of kings in here. That's actually very nice. Uh, Zenobia. Now someone actually brought this up when I was talking about another AoE archer, which was Jean, and they said, well, some people might end up skipping Summer Jean because Zenobia is an AoE archer who is arts and is easier to get and also is really good, and to be honest, I had never actually looked up what Zenobia did, <laughs> and uh, even though I have been waiting for her for two years, I don't think I ever actually looked up what her skills did. Listen, don't, don't judge me on this one. It's just good to hear that she's actually good, and after actually reading what she does, it's like, oh my god, this would be, sounds like a pretty dang good AoE um, arts unit. She doesn't have uh, NP gain, but it's perfectly fine because she gets plenty of like attack up from arts. She gets enough um, attack up from this skill as well. Like it's party, like 20% attack, 30% arts, perfectly fine. And then it's a charging of own MP gauge every turn, so that's an additional 20%. There's just no way in hell she's not constantly get like that seems perfectly solid. It's not that <laughs> to be fair, it is maybe the easiest thing in the world to be a good or being able to arts loop. It what matters most is probably your damage. And I think with the 150% to kings, that makes it so that if you ever are in a node where the final fight is with a king um, type servant, it would help greatly to have her there to just completely destroy them if they are a king. So that's very cool. I can't wait to try for Zenobia. Hopefully I'm actually able to get her, but if not, I will have to use the ticket that comes much later on. <sighs> Next, and this is the, the lady with the hour, everyone's favorite, Jack de Molay, the arcade servant that is not the arcade servant because she is a, um, she is a, a different version. Yeah, if you don't know, this is the arcade version. This is what they got. It was like a minor fluffle. And I think there's still some people who are a little bit resentment towards her. Because they would rather have the man compared to the woman, which I understand. But, you know, a new foreigner. I am not going to be reading what her foreigner is based off of. Good job, Lovecraft. Anyway, the active skills. <laughs> Let's go. Oh, we had two quicks, one arts, two buster. She is a foreigner, like I said. First skill, the veiling of depra depravity. Yes, a <laughs> increases party attack for three turns, increases party critical damage for three turns, charges party's MP gauge, and then grants a party the evil alignment except for self for three turns. 20%, 30%, 20%, cooldown of six. Uh, Shroud of Turin, fake. <laughs> it's not the real one, don't worry. Grants self invincibility for a single turn, charges on MP gauge, and then grants invincibility to allies with evil alignment except for self for one attack, one turn. 30% NP. Cooldown. Cooldown of 6, and excuse me. Innocent Monster A, which eventually turns into Innocent Monster A. Mm, Grain crit stars every turn for 3 turns, increases on quick performance for 3 turns, increases on damage against enemies with the curse status for 3 turns. Grant self on attack, activate buff for 3 turns, inflict fire curse with 500 damage for 3 turns to enemies with normal attacking, attack activates first. The star region is 10, the quick uh, attack up is 20%, and the work damage versus curse enemies is 50%, and that is a cooldown of 5, and if you want to know what it's going to be like us for at the beginning, wow, she does not have that grant self on attack activation debuff for 3 turns, so you're going to have to look at her like this... So yeah, the curse damage is nice, but there's actually, does she not have a way to inflict curse? She does, on our Noble Phantasm. It's a little bit better to have it on attack, though, because I'm going to assume she's single target. Passive skill, the existence outside of the domain A, territory creation A, divinity B. Third skill, the anti-saber attack damage aptitude, increased damage against saber enemies. The Noble Phantasm is the Verendi Therez, Friday the 13th. <laughs> Friday the 13th jump scare on Halloween. Uh, I wonder if they did that on purpose or not. Oh, she's not single target. She deals damage to all enemies and then inflicts curse status for 
with a thousand damage for five turns and inflicts evil curse sta status for five turns to them, increases curse damage on them by 30 per by increased curse damage on them by 100%. The MP level damage at level one is 600%, and at level five it is a thousand. And then increase on MP damage for three turns. This activates first. That is 20%. Charge level is one. At charge level one, and at the final charge is 40%. That kind of changes everything about her now that I know she's a quick AoE unit. Um, to be honest, this doesn't seem like a unit that would be that effective in quick farming in NA currently. But that's because, I don't know, quick farming can be a little bit weird. Typically, you would like to have MP gain or the ability to have just a buttload of um, charge, charging your own MP, which is typically around 50%. And I think she does have an MP charger, but it's a party one for 30%. And... No, she has a 60%. Actually, no, then she should be fine, then. Yeah, no, charges, parties, MP gauge by 20%. She has a 50%. Okay. That should mean it should be good enough, but only 5... Yeah, I don't... Mm, I don't know about this one. I'd have to actually be... I'd be curious to see how she actually does. Because at the paper, the only reason I'm bringing this up is just specifically the way that quick units are on NA, it's a little bit different. You could probably start preparing her for, it's a little bit different when the other one comes in. And maybe with some different team comps you can kind of make up for a lot of other things. And obviously if you have Oberon, then this is a moot point because you have Oberon in the background to take care of anything that doesn't get cleaned up by your original hits from it. But, hmm... It's interesting. If I actually don't hear that much about her, other than people being angry that she is not the man. So if you have any specific thoughts about her, I would be kind of curious to hear. I'm always willing to listen and hear like, hey, if I'm wrong about this, please correct me then, because I need to know the actual answer so I don't um, misguide people into thinking one other thing. But I can just say, just based off the stats, I feel like she would probably be okay but not the best, because obviously Doman's the best, and Doman's kind of the standard for it. And the fact that they also had to <laughs> buff this skill probably also tells you a little bit more about it. But this skill has nothing to do with her AoE damage. This is some, That's why I thought she was single target, because I was like, this would be great. Because the curse doesn't apply before, does it? Inflict curse status on for 5 turns, so... No, she doesn't inflict curse first and then deal damage. That would probably be a little bit different if she did that. Huh. Yeah, I don't know. Tell me. She would probably also be pretty fun to use with Van Gogh, actually. Because, actually, the easiest way to get to Van Gogh is to just go, yeah, existence outside of the domain. Uh, die, 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 die. Yeah, Van Gogh would probably be the most interesting to use her with. Just because you could kind of do this, you know. Further increased crit damage of existence outside of the domain allies by 100% for 3 turns. And this is an uh, existence outside of the, the domain person that um, is focused on quick, so they would get a lot of crit stars, in theory anyway. Hmm, she does get it from their third skill decently enough, I think. Star region is of 10. Sure, respectable, two quick, quick, two quick cards plus a quick a NP. But yeah, I think she would have probably end up being pretty, pretty solid, but... That's currently how it looks like. If you guys know anything further, and specifically if you play JP and you can kind of give a better a, a, a better look as to how she's doing now, because that's the other thing to kind of keep in mind is that I think there's merit for pulling for a unit that is bad now, but gets much better later, but there's also merit for pulling for a unit that is good in the moment now, but is maybe not as good later. Like, for example, Merlin. There was a time where I would have said, oh yeah, definitely go for him and I would still say you definitely go for him even though me on the JP side at this point he is considered maybe one of the weaker uh, is he actually for Buster he is definitely the weakest Buster support but that's because they released a, a Buster support that actively says don't use Merlin <laughs> so is that really fair to him he's still one of the best but you know I'm getting off track now. That's the end of this right here. I will be summoning on this banner. I'm hoping to kind of get both of them. If there was anyone that would specifically say this is the one I want, it's definitely Zenobia. I think I'm at the point now where until the new quick support is actually released, 
I'm not that super interested in release in a quick AoE servant, especially because I already have Dantes. I don't have Doman. If I did, then maybe a little bit different, but um, I have Dantes, and if I really want to use a quick servant for anything AoE related, it would just be Dantes because he handles basically absolutely everything at MP level 1, which is crazy because I feel like constantly people are telling me he, sh he, he isn't that good at MP level 1, and I'm always using him at MP level 1 and completely wiping every single floor possible with him, but... But I'm also with a 100% kaleidoscope, so that probably changes things just a little bit, but I digress. That's the end of the video, everyone. Thank you very much for watching. As always, feel free to tell me how you do. If you have any specific opinions about any of the units I talked about, feel free to tell me about them. I'm always looking, I always read them, and I always remember them. So, if you're thinking like, hey, it's not worth it because he doesn't actually read it, I do actually read it, and I'm always interested to see how other people feel to get a good gauge on it. It's funny because I don't really spend all my time looking for how good a unit is when I choose to summon for them. Like I, for example, when I said with Zenobia, I had no idea what she did until a little while ago, just today. Um, I definitely pull because I think the unit is cool, and I care for the character's personality, and I think that ends up coming up first for him. But it's always good to kind of actually know how good <laughs> a servant is, so that you're not making yourself look like a fool and saying, nah, this is actually the best unit, and it's like, not it's like low tier or something <laughs> i think there's merit to both sides of it but anyway that's the end of the video everyone thank you very much for watching until next time best of luck bye peace bye